The landscape of 4K media players is ever-changing, and today we look at the flagship Hi-Fi player from Zaidu, the Neo Alpha Signature Edition. And we're going to check it out right after the jump. And I am back. What is up, TechnoFam? I hope you are having a great day. First things first, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You rock for supporting the channel. And if you would like to help and support the channel, click the link in the description and become a patron today. Also, I need to thank the good folks at Zaidu for sending over the Alpha Neo signature for me to review. And without further ado, let's go upstairs, see what's in the box. The Zaidu Neo Alpha Signature Edition comes in around $3,000 and gets released in July, which means it is a direct competitor to the Zapidi Signature. In the box, we are greeted with an accessories box that contains a three-prong IEC power cable, remote control, high-speed HDMI cable, small screws and screwdriver, manual, and the Neo Alpha itself, which comes wrapped in this bag. On the front panel from left to right, we have a power button, a headphone output, and two USB-A ports. In the middle, there is a five inch touchscreen OLED display, which looks really nice when the unit is on and it is very responsive. On the right, we have a volume knob. Why a volume knob? Because you can use the Neo Alpha as a preamp and connect it directly to an amplifier or to powered speakers. Let's jump over to the back and see what we got going on. From left to right, we have a main power switch and power port, digital optical audio output, main HDMI output, HDMI output for audio and DSD only, IR input jack, RS-232 connection, a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 3.0A ports. Next is the digital audio input section consisting of optical, coaxial, and a USB DAC. And this is what you'll be using for Tidal MQA decoding from your computer. Next is the analog output section consisting of stereo unbalanced RCA outputs and stereo balanced XLR outputs. You will have to use one of these if you want to utilize the internal ESS Sabre 9038 Pro DAC. By the way, this is the same DAC found in the discontinued OPPO UDP 205. And on the far right, we have a hard drive bay that will fit either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive with capacity of up to 18 terabytes. Along the top, you may have noticed the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas as well. Okay, let's get the Neo Alpha in the rack and fire this baby up. I'm excited to see what it has to offer. I had to move a few pieces around to fit the Neo Alpha in the main rack. I placed it above the Marantz AV7706 processor. The main HDMI output is going into an HDMI input on the Marantz and the RCAs are connected to the CD RCAs on the Marantz. Turning this on, I decided to go through the setup wizard because that's probably what most of you will do. First thing we have to do is pair the remote control via Bluetooth. Pretty simple instructions, nothing complicated at all. Here are some setup options so the Zaidu knows exactly how it's integrated into your system. I selected the third option, HDMI connects to a 2.0 AV receiver, which is then connected to the TV. Hit next a couple of times and then start to use. Here is the main home screen, which I think looks pretty slick. There are five sections at the bottom here, music player, poster wall, media center, apps, and settings. There is a down arrow, and if you hit the down arrow, you get to the section where the apps live if you happen to have downloaded any of them. Clicking into the music player, they give us a tutorial, which is the same for movies as well. We need to add a folder of music and then run a scan of that folder. I have a 16 terabyte hard drive in my Zapidi downstairs, which is on the network. So all I need to do is navigate to the DSD portion of my music and play this track from Michael Jackson. As you can see, they also show the lyrics of the song as it's playing. That's kind of cool. 
On the left, we have the album art, and below, we have all the details of the file, file type, and bitrate, and all that kind of stuff. I then went into my FLAC folder and played a couple of tracks from Adele, which does the same thing with the lyrics and info. So the next thing I wanted to do is scan for movies. So I'll go into poster wall. And when we get to this screen, which says there is no poster, we need to go and select open sources. That'll bring you to this screen where we can add a source. We can see that the Decidu remembers the previous location of my hard drive on the network. So I'll select that. Next, I'll scroll down and select the folder movies 4K. Now select OK and select start scan and hit OK again. Now we just wait until the Zaidu scans my hard drive for all the movies in the Movies 4K folder. Once that was done and complete, I had the Neo Alpha scan the folder Movies 1080p. Just a note here, this did take a while, so you can set the Zaidu to scan and then go do something else and come back in like 20, 30 minutes and it should be done at that point. I mean, obviously it depends on how many movies you have. I had about 300 in total. So I know a lot of you have a lot larger uh, movie catalogs. So yeah, your mileage may vary. All right, when all that was completed, I went into all and here's what we get with the poster wall. As you can see, Zaidu is populating all the movie posters, metadata and graphics as I scroll down. Here we can see the Zaidu automatically create a collection for Fantastic Beasts and you can see both movies in here. Going into one of them, you can see all the metadata and stats for the movie, along with the artwork, directors, actors, and all that. Looks like I'll have to make some edits as I have the original avatar, but the Zaidu has labeled it as the new avatar, The Way of Water. So obviously that's the movie's not even out yet, so I don't have that, so I gotta edit that. There's an icon in the upper right which gives you different viewing options for the poster wall. So you can change this to however you like to see your library. So just play around with that if you have one of these Zaidu systems. I threw on Bad Boys for Life as I know its audio is in IMAX enhanced. And if I press info on the Moran's AV7706 while it's playing, we can see we are getting IMAX enhanced. I didn't have to change any audio settings, so that's nice to know it's set up properly out of the gate. I had re-ripped the Matrix movies because I wanted to check out Dolby Vision support for MKV files. And when I go into details for the Matrix Reloaded, we can see Dolby Vision logo is right there. Pressing play, we get the Dolby Vision alert from the LG TV in the upper right corner. And we also get the Dolby Vision alert in the top left corner, which is from the Zaidu itself. Pressing info on the Morantz, we can see we are also getting Dolby Atmos as well. So it looks like the Zaidu will support Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos from a single MKV ripped 4K disc. Also, I just want to interject and let you guys know that I did test ISO files and I was able to get Dolby Vision from the ISO file as well. Okay, so now let's go and scan some music for the music player. So we need to navigate to sources and add a folder. Again, I'll navigate to the hard drive on the network, go to music, and then select DSD and select OK. So just like that, it will start scanning music just like it did for the movies. I did the same thing for my FLAC folder as well. And this did seem to take a while. I have over 2200 tracks, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. So I don't know if this was a limitation of grabbing the music from the network or whatever. Maybe it's faster if you plug in a USB drive or hard drive to the USB 3 on the back of the Zaidu and do the scanning that way. That might be quicker. I'm not sure. The Neo Alpha does have a 512 gigabyte SSD internal, which means you can copy your music and store it on this SSD. I think that is a handy feature. Scrolling through my tracks, it looks like I have a couple of doubled tracks in here. This means I must have doubled up on a folder on my hard drive, which means I'll have to go and remove something, which is, you know, it's just one of those things that you'll have to do. So make sure your library is like concise and you don't have any doubles and you won't have to deal with this. Also, you should probably make sure you have all your album art because some of them I do have, some of them I don't. And you really want that album art for the display purposes. Now you can search through your music in many ways, tracks, artist, album, genre, or even the quality of the files, like literally the bit rate. You can move it along here and select the highest bit rate and highest quality files you have, or 
you know, just find whatever is there. <laughs> the front of this unit is actually pretty sexy. The five inch OLED touchscreen looks great and is very responsive. You can actually use this front panel to play music without turning on your TV or full system. All I need to do is turn on the Zaidu and the Marantz and I'm good to go. On the home screen, we have music, media center, source in and settings. I can tap on music, then albums, select an album, then select a song, then tap view in the upper right corner to display the album art and transport controls on the screen. We do have a volume control on the right, which does affect the overall volume going out of the Zaidu. So if you're not using this as a preamp, you will still need to turn the volume up or you won't hear anything. Tapping this meter icon brings up different displays for music. There's a spectrum analyzer and two different VU meters. So you have those options for a display. Also under display settings, you can set the screensaver to be either blank or a few different types of clocks. There's a digital clock, which was the default. Classic clock, which I like the most as I can read it from my couch. The concise clock, which makes it just a little bit bigger. And the analog clock. I like the classic clock because I can read it from 14 feet away. It's a little bit bigger than the Zipedes clock. And it does have the cool little like flipping animation which you'll see right here. Tapping control center brings up a few QR codes. Simply scan whichever QR code applies to your device and it will take you to the control app for downloading. So you can control the Zaidu with your tablet or phone. Going into media center brings up options to play music. This can be done by Spotify, Rune, DLNA or AirPlay. You can also go into the file manager and play these files you have copied to the internal SSD or via your home network. If you want to use MQA decoding with Tidal, you will need to connect your computer to the USB-B port on the back of the Neo Alpha. Then select source in on the front panel, select USB in and then select connect it. You will need to select the Zaidu in the audio output settings of your computer and Tidal will also ask you if you want to use the Zaidu for playback. You can see on the display it shows the sample rate and the format is MQA Studio with a little MQA symbol. One thing you need to keep in mind while you're playing MQA is that you will be using the internal ESS Sabre 9038 Pro DAC which means you will have to connect up something analog. So you're going to use your analog RCA or your analog XLR. Those are the two ways to connect up analog. Also, it will work with your headphones. So if you plug in some headphones, since that is also analog. So MQA will come from the computer to the Zaidu, hit the DAC and go out all of the available analog outputs. So if you have the Zaidu connected up via HDMI and you're wondering, hey, I'm playing this MQA, why am I not hearing anything? It's because that signal was strictly analog coming out of the Zaidu. So you will need to connect up the RCAs or XLRs if you want to run MQA. All right, so that's a basic overview and how to use the unit. And this is fairly new. I think I'm one of the few people that actually got one to review. So I wanted to try to do this comprehensive overview of the Neo Alpha Signature Edition, just so if you guys picked one up, you knew exactly what to do and you weren't, you know, confused about anything. So you're probably thinking, well, Techno Dad, what do you think? Basically, I really like the way this thing looks, right? The front looks really sexy. The OLED screen is nice. Um, I like the little clock screen saver. It's a little bit bigger than the Zipedi and it's easier to read from like 14 feet away where I sit at my couch. Uh, as far as the poster wall is concerned, yeah, I'm not too thrilled on that. I like the Zipedi's interface a little bit better and I also like the fact that Zipedi has the new moving um, backgrounds when you're on a movie, so that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, the Zaidu is 
perfectly functional. I just kind of prefer the look of the Zipidi. Navigating through menus on the Zaidu and playing content is very intuitive, so you won't have any problems there. It's not confusing at all. Um, one of the things I have heard that people don't like is that it has like lifted black levels and there is some judder while movies are playing. So it's interesting to hear those things because both the signature Zipidi and this Neo Alpha Signature Edition use pretty much the same chips in everything. So I would assume they're pretty identical, but I will be checking out black levels on both and doing a comparison between this and the Zipidi since the Zipidi Signature is in the same price range and it would be an apples to apples comparison, them being both the flagship that the companies have released. So look forward to more videos about these two players. And if you have something specific you want me to check out, uh, leave me a note down in the comments below or let me know even if you would buy something like this. Is it a little too pricey? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.